Kartik Suryanarayanan. <laughs> Portfolio accepted. So Kartik, tell us, what would you like to do with your career? Um, I'm definitely uh, uh, planning to do something with regarding to architecture. And really? I'm so surprised. <laughs> and the way that you learn things more. Wow, you definitely have a plan. How do you think? You, how do you plan on achieving that? Um, well, uh, prior to coming to Hallmarks, I used to work in an investment banking company, and uh, we had tied up with different uh, uh, builders in terms of selling their properties. So I definitely contacted them and tell them that I'm back, but definitely not coming back as an investment banker, but as a photographer, tied up. Uh, try to network a little bit and get the work. Good for you. It's so great to hear from someone who has like a definite plan on what they want to do. And the fact that you're going to use your um, your abilities to network, I mean, networking with, with peers and with uh, every individual you can is just such a terrific way to make your dreams come true and from a, and your business model actually happen. I also think it's a it's fantastic to think that somebody's leaving investment banking for the financial security of photography. <laughs> I'm a little bit of an architectural. Am I on my yeah, front yeah. here? So maybe we should hold them up. Um, okay, go to G. This is hard to find them. Okay. I was so excited. I mean, this <laughs> may be a stretch, but I, I, it reminded me of Mondrian. You know the paint, painter Mondrian? No. It's a totally, it's a totally abstract. Oh, it's going to be hard to describe, but um, I'm not going to bother. He's very geometric. Very geometric. The first lecture we had. Okay. Oh, really? Okay, so you can go back and look. It's all lines and squares and but there's a rhythm in it, and the one I'm thinking of is Broadway Boogie Woogie. So how do these lines that kind of look like a New York City transit map, right. you know, colorized and abstracted? Why do I look at this picture, your pictures, and think of laundry and, and Boogie Woogie? Because there's just so much jazz in them. I just and I feel, and unlike laundry and now, I feel that these buildings have an inner pulse and an inner life. So I think it's a very exciting and creative, I don't know how practical it is, but I mean, they're really exciting pictures. Now you can look at them and say, they're overlit, they're too colored, they do this, they don't show the volume, they don't show the scale. I mean, it's not really traditional. And you may have to add the traditional, simpler look, but Oh, no. I think they're fun. Well, wait. I think he's got the beginnings of a really good style, and I think that's that, what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to say, from a practical sense, he may have to add something because people may buy the sizzle, you know, and then say, "I love this look," and then when you go down the bureaucracy of your clientele, it ends up being someone might be afraid or something like that. I, I definitely have to disagree. I mean, for me, I think the thing is, is that. If you look at your work and there's definitely something that's consistent and there's a, a sense of a, a vision, and I've had it happen in my career, which is that where as soon as somebody says, this is really great, but it's a little too far out there, and you, what you need to do is put some more safe things in your portfolio so people aren't th so thrown, all that happens is that people forget the good stuff and they go, oh, I've seen this before. They go to the safe stuff, and then all you ever do is safe stuff. And it's just like if what you want to do is a particular thing, you show that thing. And you know, you don't want to show the things that are safe. It's going to be harder to get the work and it might take a little while. But um, I definitely think it's, it's what you want to do is you want to keep yourself really consistent. And I think that the only thing that I, I, I mean, I think that uh, where you're going is fantastic. And, the one thing that I feel was, um, oh, is it that? 
I'm tired this morning. The one thing that I feel like was missing is that <clears throat> I actually want to see just more of your architecture, but I want to see you develop, like the wine glasses tells me that you have this great sense of composition, and I feel that your buildings are all very far back, and they're all very much portrait of a building from a distance, and architecture is, of course, all about the pieces of the buildings, all the way down from the doorknobs to the doors, and the, the photo of the, the person sitting there, is a, that's an architectural picture that a person just happened to end up in, but everything about that is architecture, it's about structure. And the same with the jewelry shop. Again, it's very symmetrical, it's got great leading lines, it's very nicely lit, and all of these pictures have this great sense of rhythm and composition, and I want to see you actually just keep going in architecture, but I want to see you keep playing more with the leading lines, the, the patterns, the structure, the geometry, because in a sense, especially outdoors, you're very limited in what you can do with lighting. Um, so in a sense, like architecture to me is, is and one of the reasons I, I love it is, and admire looking at it, is it's very zen. There's very few things you can do, and so the things that you do need to be extremely thoughtful and considered, and you definitely have that, and I want to see you kind of push more into seeing details, seeing doorways, seeing close, seeing a little farther out, seeing medium, seeing the larger picture, and uh, and I think that would be great because you certainly have the eye for it. Absolutely. What's great is you look like it. I mean, for a client, a prospective client, I think what's really great is you look like the pictures show that you're really excited about the buildings and you're really turned on to shooting them. And I think people really respond to that very, very much. You know what I mean? It's not like distant, cold, documentary pictures. It looks like you get you think it's really, really cool, and you get excited by it. So I think people really respond to that very, very much. I think it's a great thing. So which is your favorite image, and why? I think it would be the first one. Okay, so why are those three your favorite images? Um, I mean, I had never thought of doing uh, an interior shot, but then I said, let's give it a go and see how it comes up. So I got to use uh, Greg's, one of Greg's awesome lenses, which is the tilt shift, and I sat and played around for almost two or three hours to like shoot and see what are the different angles. So I really enjoyed taking that shot. and. Uh, I, I mean, I like the fact that you have some sunset and uh, different kinds of uh, cloud movement. So that's one of the reasons why I like the first shot a lot as well. And the first shot, because uh, I think I shot it from a different angle than what it is normally shot. Because I, initially, I took the other angle, which was the front, where you have the facade of the building coming all the way out. But then. We went up, we went up, professors told me that you should try looking at something different, and I went back and shot this. So I, I just like the fact that you can go back to the same place, and nothing seems to have changed, and you're pretty much playing with nature as well as the sky. So. Did you intervene in the lighting? Because there's such a consistent personal stamp to the lighting, I feel like you went and turned on the lights inside the building. <laughs> no, this was a college in Northampton, so the day when we went, and I think it was the day when they were closing, so I just spoke to the person before they closed from teaching, and I had asked them whether I could shoot for a couple of hours, and they were like pretty really okay with it. Did they turn on extra lights for you, or these were the lights? Uh, these were the lights which were banned in the building. Mm -hmm. Do you scout ahead? Do you go to them and take a look at them? And well, I look, at, look up on the net first, and then I call them up and ask them whether, I mean, it's for my year and portfolio, and it'll be okay, it's not really, you put to any much to use. And they're pretty okay with it. One thing I think that would be a fun exercise, and this is something that kind of came to me now thinking about it, is, um, is to pick maybe a building, like a, a public building, where you don't really have to have permission and you can be there, but to give yourself an assignment of showing up really early, like before sunrise, and staying until after sunset, 
but forcing yourself to shoot not just through the good light of early morning and, and the evening, but also through the day and to experiment, like thinking about, you know, you would think, oh, noon would be horrible, but then searching around for where the light is bouncing around. And if the place is filled with people, how do you deal with that? Like stack NDs so you can still do a 30 second exposure during the day and make all those people disappear and allow you to still have pure architecture without the, the problems. But to give yourself that kind of assignment of forcing yourself to spend a whole day looking at all different possibilities within one structure, I think would be a really fun project. I also think a thing, a thing to uh, try, I mean, these, these were great. I think a thing to try with your interiors and exteriors is to try to indicate the human scale. And I think uh, people really like having like a figure in the image somewhere or a couple of figures. And you'll see that when they do architectural renderings, they always have little humans in there just to kind of show what it is or how the place is used or in what way. And I think that uh, that would be something. And oftentimes, architectural photographers bring with people, just specifically, you know, bring with friends or whatever, specifically for that purpose. They can control them and have them be exactly where they need them, that kind of thing. And, um, and that's- That'd be a good product, is to have like a blow-up person for an architecture <laughs> photo. <laughs> well, we can get hold of those. Because I think that would be a good idea. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Um, yeah. Along the lines of what Greg was saying about you know spending the whole day, have you ever thought of it was, they have that result in a photo essay with a bunch of different? If you do portraits, you can get angry, sad, happy, and like get a whole panoply kind of, of emotional stuff from a person. And I feel you're approaching them, the buildings as people. So would you? It could be really interesting to make a whole photo essay with the different moods and characters and feelings. Do you know, in addition to that, um, that's actually really a good point. We work um, with a contractor, there's a, a very large company that's building a tunnel um, through one of the mountains in the Bay Area. And um, we have um, created and gone step by step through that process to photograph this, um, this amazing you know, new part of the Bay Area as it's being built. And what we've done is we're in the process right now of creating an album for that particular client. Um, and this is a terrific way, the first time, and this is the, the first project that we've done of this nature, is once this project is complete, because we have shots of, of action of boring the tunnel and of the workers actually working and such, we'll complete and do an album, um, a book for that particular, for the, for the, the company who, who produced this. And I think this is a terrific way, especially people who, if they're building something of this nature, they really have got, I mean, serious dollars behind them. And it's a terrific way from, even from an ego standpoint, for them to have something to say, hey, look, this is our, this is our building from beginning to end. And then it's an, also a great way, one of the things that we've already done is we've done slideshows for them for their, when they have their meetings about the progress of this, of this, of this endeavor. And so it's a great way to get your name out there to other for other possible projects, because there's a great deal of money in this. Yeah. It, the one other thing I would mention is, I think you should think about doing like a personal project. That would it could be anything. It could be pick your favorite up dead architect and photograph his or her buildings, or or do a project on people's garages, or it could be almost anything. But some little thing that really appeals to you, and you could have in a sense a portfolio of these kinds of images and a separate little portfolio of those. And, I, and again, I think people respond to seeing what interests you. And if they don't have to be classic architectural pictures. They can be anything, you know what I mean? And I think if something just appeals to you, whatever it is, you know, the world's tallest building, like yeah, whatever it is that you want to do, but put together like a little box of prints that's sort of your thing and build that up so you have a little portfolio. And I think people would really respond well to that. It just makes you more of a three-dimensional person to them as opposed to just a vendor or a source, you know what I mean? And, I think that could, and also that could be a really fun thing as a promotion to kind of give out to people you know, something like that that they would really treasure. Would be a great thing. And maybe details, close-ups where there's a good yeah. reflection, <clears throat> something like that. Like in the wedding photography, it used to be just the bride and now it's the bouquet and the ring. You know, just the detail that can you know, the whole of the different perspectives on it. So. Well, I think it would be great. So do we want to talk about any other pictures? <laughs> just as a whole portfolio, um, that's You know, I would like to just make a comment about um, 
uh, you're, there's no question you, your interest is in architecture, and I really have great respect for that. Um, your portraits are not your strength at all. I mean, I think that you, you can tell that you're not all that interested in it. But what I'd like you to think of is think conceptually. Don't think literally. And, and I think that you thought literally. In your mind, I'm thinking you're a logical thinker. You're thinking architecture's where I want to go. But there are ways to incorporate your love with every assignment that you do. So in other words, when I look at the photographs that you did of the people, um, you could create, I mean, you could create um, uh, it's like the portrait of the young lady wearing the sari. Um, when you're given an assignment that says, hey, you have to photograph an individual, try to find a way to do what an assignment is and, and incorporate your passion into that. And my reason for encouraging you to do that is the fact that if you, if you keep an open mind and you start finding ways to take um, other entities that maybe are not all that great of an interest to you and find a way to make them, marry them with what you love to do, it broadens your, your appeal. And I'm thinking that, you know, the architecture of the buildings, and the next step to me would be the architect in some way in front of that building. And they have, I mean, if I were an architect, I would want to be photographed at some point with my building in the background or something. So, so that human element will at some point come into play. And the way you feel today may not be the way you feel tomorrow. In the future, you may find that, you know, they, you may get this amazing assignment and they say, hey, look, we want to have this fabulous model in front of this beautiful piece of architecture in some way. This is a good example right here um, of using a subject and, and using it in your love of architecture. The only thing I would have done in this case is I would have put them maybe on the other side where that archway is. Um, but my point is, is that, for, for, and this is for all of you students out there, when you're given an assignment and, and it's not something that you like to do, find a way to say, well, what is it that I do like to do and how can I apply this to what I love? And then it'll, make, it'll, it'll just make you a much more rounded photographer and give you, um, I think when you, when you do the things that you don't like to do and you do them, find a way to make it work for you, it makes you such a better photographer and, and it pushes you. When it's easy for you to do what you do, then guess what, in the future, you're gonna get seriously bored with that. You'll be so freaking bored, you'll hate it. So you, you have to find a way to push yourself. And I've found for me that if I do something I don't like, if I can find a way to, 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 to work it so that it becomes interesting to me, it's not only become something I go, well, yeah, well, I can do that. Um, but it also keeps you excited about our craft as a, in photography. That's a good, I know I can use that advice when I wish something and I don't want to get advice. But I think your most successful portraits are also the ones that are the most structured and rigid, which we might critique somebody else for, but I think it's actually your your strength because I feel like, uh, I think, well, these two for sure were, were ones that to me have the strength and structure and composition of somebody who likes that, who likes that rigidity, who likes the pattern, who likes the repetition, who likes the structure, like architecture. I mean, in a sense, the portrait of the, the boxer is almost very like statuesque, and it's his, his fists are filling the frame, there's really great rhythm. So it's an opportunity for you to take the things that you like and that inform you about architecture and incorporate that within your, and I think it was a great idea about portraits of architects, because no architect wants a very, like, the worst thing in the world you could ever do would be to do a portrait of a architect, you know, like that, that way. I mean, that's not how you would shoot an architect. I mean, an architect would want to be shot like this, and, and harder, farther, you know, I was playing around with, you know, trying to find, I'm limited what I can do with crops, but moving the crops around to, to, to stress the composition and everything. Okay, I'm going to just make this smaller. Um, let's see, I'm going to do where that time go. Okay, um, this, in fact, this guy, um, this could be someone who does interiors. And at some point, you may, be, you may, your career might progress to doing interior design, not interior design, but photographing interior decorators, um, maybe the way that they showcase uh, some sort of amazing home. Um, and when you do that, um, this gentleman, the way that you posed him in this seat makes him look a bit squatty. It doesn't make him look powerful, and it doesn't make him look like he knows what he's doing. It makes him look 
a bit insecure because he's sitting very back and very kind of proper. So with that thought in mind, looking at this photograph, how might you, if you could redo this photograph, how might you change that? How could you reshoot this particular scene to make him look more powerful and more like he's commanding, like, like as if he were, he just wanted to design that room or maybe built that table? Um, well, I, I don't know that I would necessarily have him sit unless it was on the table. I maybe mean, would have him sit like a, a portion on the table or have him stand and maybe even photograph from a, a lower camera angle. But whatever I do, or have him lean across the table. If you have him just, if he had his arms stretched out and he were leaning like this, that would make him look so much more powerful like, you know, I know exactly what I'm doing and I own this room. And that's kind of a thought process that um, when, when we're doing photographs of men, we want them to feel, to take ownership of that environment. And by having them sit, um, it's not a bad portrait, by the way. It's not, it's not horrible, but it just, it doesn't, um, it falls short in that it doesn't tell the best story for that particular subject. Unless he's like a poet or something. Yeah. And Do you know what I mean? Like if he's a different kind of person, then that's a different kind of mood. You know what I mean? If he's like, the owner or businessman or something like that, then the kind of image you're describing is exactly what's needed. Maybe with different lighting, because he seems to assume it into this table mass, and it's this yeah. brown hole, like the, the classic black hole, and then these interesting clocks that should be a, yeah, a player. I'm not as, I'm not as, yeah, I, I think the pose has an awkwardness, but then the fact that there's a bee's nest on top of these strange cuckoo clocks, it's like, then it starts to get a little stranger, and it, it actually, Suits me. I think it's okay. It's not good to highlight that. It's yeah. just yeah. kind of like something yeah. muddy. It's a bit under the background. That's what I'm saying. But it's also the expression on his face. And if he, just a just point about him being a writer, if he were a writer or a poet or something of that nature, then this pose to me still would not be appropriate for him. I'd want to see him, I'd want to see more um, of an emotional response from that individual. Something that showcased them. <coughs> in a more thoughtful way. He just looks a little bit questioning, a little bit unsure in the way his facial appearance looks. So it, or, I'm not trying to beat it to that because it's not a bad photograph. Yeah. But I A mean, question I have, Bambi, actually f for you, I was thought maybe it would be good. Because it's something that crops up in a lot of students' work, I think. So I'm not picking on you, Carpenter. But um, a real common kind of thing that we see a lot is, is sort of, oh, come on. Hang on just for a second. It's sort of like, uh, this would be one, this would be one, this would be one. There are more, but sort of um, just right off the bat. I'm looking at these, it's kind of like people don't know what to do with, the, like women always have their hand on their hip. It's like, that's always the pose, sort of, is a hand on the hip, or people don't seem comfortable. What, what would be like a strategy or an alternate way to get somebody to stand? Because somebody stands there and the first thing they say is, well, what do you want me to do? Right. You know, what's like a good a good way to start working with someone? Like okay. That? Um, so it's not posy. Um, first of all, I I would never treat each of these subjects the same way. I don't have a formula about the way that I work. Right. What I would do, for instance, with this young lady, when I look at this photograph, first of all, I have to say that um, Lois had a great idea. She said we should this should be flipped upside down, and it would look really interesting. The reflection was quite you know, interesting. But besides that, when I the first thing I do when I uh, look at a subject is I analyze the garments that they're wearing. What is that subject wearing? Well, she's wearing this amazing sari, so I want to see some, I want to see some movement, almost belly dance like, um, with her. So what I would probably do is have her instead of having her pull her arms out, her arm out, that joint isn't bent. Women are very, you know, she's curvaceous, she's elegant. So I want to see some flow to her body. So I would probably start by having her move her arms around, and maybe even something that's a bit more of like maybe even a belly dance kind of move. I'm not trying to make it cutesy and trite, but, but that's, I would probably want to move into some sort of um, uh, that kind of feel for the photograph. Does that make sense? And then for the, the photograph of the girls that are on the boat, I think context is really important. Um, when we look at these young ladies, they're, um, the young lady, especially in the middle, she's got her hand on her hip, but there's no, she's pretty straight up and down. Um, and the young lady over on the, on the left-hand side, she's just got her hands up. I don't feel like there's any, um, uh, there's no purpose 
So if they're on a boat, I kind of want to see a little bit of like, whoa, let's have some fun. I feel like that's what, actually, that's what I feel is missing on this. They're out on a boat, and in my mind, I'm thinking, we should be having a ball. These girls, there should be one sitting down here and then maybe throwing her legs back laughing. And I'm thinking of a party. And so in my mind, when I'm photographing people in an active kind of lifestyle way, I want the pose to fit that. So I wouldn't probably do the, the hands on the hip kind of thing. However, what I, I do like that you did is the fact that you bent one knee. I think that breaking that, that pose and bending knee is a really good thing. Um, the other thing that I would not want is, see how their heads are horizontal, they're all straight across? Well, you've got these strong vertical lines and then that horizontal, so it kind of cuts them. So I'd want to see some staggering in the way that they're posed. Maybe I'd have one with her legs hanging off the side of the boat and have another one standing and then hanging onto those rails. Um, and, then, and, and then keep that party atmosphere by having them not look in the camera, but having them interact with one another. Well, that's great, Karthik. Thank you so much. I think these are going to look amazing. I think our architecture career is like...